Oh, hey, welcome to my house. Let's go check out my bar. How's it going? I'm Joe. Uh, this is my home bar. Moved into this house about five years ago and really uh, had a blank slate space here with uh, concrete walls, cement floor, and wanted to do something fun and unique down here. And all, all I could think about for probably about three years of living here is just envisioning this space exactly like this. <laughs> We didn't know how we were gonna go about it. We didn't have the budget for it. So really over the course of about two, three years, we pieced it together little by little. Uh, COVID really jump-started that. The only places that are open were the hardware stores and Menards. So um, I would buy, you know, buy what I could, you know, 20 bucks here, 100 bucks there, 50 bucks there, um, to the point where I, I get yelled at like, no more stuff this week. I'm like, okay, fine, all right. So um, it, it took a long time to get to piece it together, but uh, it took about three years to finally fully build it out. My love for hockey really kind of uh, took over and uh, I have the, a gracious wife that put up with this stupid idea down here, but uh, it's fun. Um, this is our bar, eight feet long, uh, made, out of, made out of broken hockey sticks. This was uh, me and my buddies collecting them over the years. There's uh, 105 sticks, I believe. I like to call it the world's most expensive bar because most of them are about anywhere, anybody that plays knows they're about anywhere from 150 to $300 for a stick. So there's quite a few, but um, we saved all the nice wood ones for the top, um, kind of a nice feature for that. One of the things I had to have in here was the hockey boards. Uh, recreate the boards, the, the experience of being in a rink, but I didn't want it overly kitschy to where it looks like you're on the ice and we definitely want, we didn't want to do a white floor or anything like that. We considered it, but I kind of at the end said no. Um, it also functions as a drink rail all the way around, so there's always a place to put your beer or your cocktail. So, we filled the room with lots of memorabilia. A lot of the stuff I've had in the past, uh, had from years of just collecting to some things that uh, people have given me now that this is complete. A couple of the things that are really special to me, one is the 1980 Olympic team, Sports Illustrated. Uh, it was my dad's, he had Sports Illustrated growing up and at some point he just wanted to throw away all of his old Sports Illustrated. So I dug through all of them and I kept a bunch of ones that I thought were cool and that cover with them winning the gold. Uh, actually, it's not winning the gold, it's when they beat the Russians. It was super awesome, I had to keep it and I had the opportunity a few years ago, um, a friend of mine was able to get it signed by Michael Ruzioni that scored the game winning goal against the USSR. Um, so it's that's framed, I, I love that, that piece is great. So, one of the things that we've learned through trial and error um, from having uh, having people over and partying down here, uh, responsibly of course, is the need to go back upstairs to the kitchen. So we wanted to have as many amenities as you have in your kitchen. So um, we put things like our uh, like an ice maker in here. We have two fridges uh, and a dishwasher. That was actually really important to me with the dishwasher, um, so that I don't have to keep bringing all the. Uh, dirty glasses upstairs and at the end of the night I can just close it up, hit start and go to bed and it's tucked away down here in the basement, no one, no one can hear it. Um, running water was another thing, that was a challenge too because there is no, uh, there's no running water on this side. Um, this is actually the external of the house. I had to learn how to be a plumber uh, pretty quick on the fly. Lots of phone calls to uh, plumber friends of mine. Um, I was able to, to figure it out and get it, get it working so now we have running water. Our back bar, this was probably my favorite part to do of the whole project. These are all barrel staves from uh, Woodford Reserve. So it smelled delicious in here when we, uh, when we cut all the fresh oak staves. Uh, the trick was to get them to stay on the wall. Um, I, was, I actually stole it from a design I saw at a bar. 
uh, we cut them in half and they lay flatter on the wall so we're able to tack nail them in a little bit easier. They're pretty solid and rigid and it gives you a nice base to hang things, um, shelves and uh, pictures. Obviously we have to have uh, my buddy Hansi represented here so we can, uh, I can always come down and have a drink with them every night. So. Well, we like to have fun here, but we don't like to have too much fun. So in theme with the hockey, uh, the hockey theme of the bar, we added a penalty box. So far, we only have one guy that's gotten a penalty uh, for spilling a drink, spilled twice. Gave him a little warning, like a good ref does, and then he spilled again, and I kind of uh, said, all right, buddy, two. So they has to come sit in this nice little tight enclosure penalty box for two minutes and then uh, and then he goes free but he still feels shame one of my other favorite items in this room uh, was a gift from a, uh, another guy they were fold the folding chairs from the old Met Center I grew up a big uh, North Stars fan Mike McDonald was my guy and uh, these came right out of right out of the old Met Center when they tore it down and uh, and broke my heart and moved to a city that shall not be named in the south Some challenges we had building were we have an air duct over on our side over here that um, go, that feeds the addition. Uh, so we had to box around that, which created the the trophy case, which is a fun little uh, subject that gets brought up. Uh, my wife and I have a debate on whether or not you should throw away your your trophies when from when you were a kid, uh, and I said no, and she said yes. So. I built an entire trophy case for all my first place trophies. <laughs> One of the things that I did is a lot of research. Like I went to, I mean, I do professionally go to a lot of bars and there's things I really love about this bar and really hate about that bar. And I made sure not to do the things that I didn't like. Um, I like this bar top is a little bit higher than normal. I like it like that. Do the things that you want to do and everybody else can just deal with it is kind of the way I look at it. Cause you're going to be in the space the most, make it the way you want it and just go with it. If you have the dumbest, craziest idea, but you still like believe in that idea, do it. I was never really a handy, handy person. I didn't learn how to do that growing up. Um, I've learned on the fly doing this. So uh, that kind of, when I walk in here, I feel really proud of you know, what I was able to build um, and put together. Uh, I know it's not everybody's thing, uh, having a hockey bar, but it's my thing and I kind of, um, I enjoy entertaining a lot. So I really wanted a space to have people, have people come feel comfortable and it's, it's not super, super kitschy and, and weird. It's, it's just got the right amount. <laughs> Well, thanks for coming. I'm glad you could uh, see what we got going on down here. And uh, if you're ever in the neighborhood, stop by for a beer and happy bar building. Cheers. <laughs>